we're going to get started. So I think I fixed the sound here. We'll see. All right, guys, let me know how the audio sounds now. I think I fixed it. Are we okay now? Hopefully that's, uh, that's doing a little bit better. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, guys. Welcome to my 20,000 subscribers uh, live stream. So this is my second time trying this out. So it's going to be a little bit different than our, our normal program. Um, thank you guys all for stopping by. What I want to do here tonight, so yeah, we just hit 20,000 subscribers on the channel, so I'm going to be going through a state of the collection. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'm going to be talking about the watches that I have and kind of going over how I got them. And what it's it's kind of an interesting thing being a, um, you know, starting out as a watch collector, and now I, I feel like almost I'm, I'm more of a watch reviewer than a collector because so much of my collection is centered around the YouTube channel and finding watches that I think you guys would be interested in seeing. Um, so a lot of the watches that I have aren't necessarily completely personal to me. They're not things that I would necessarily have bought if I didn't have a YouTube channel. Um, so like nailing down exactly what is my collection can be a little bit difficult. Um, but the watches I'm going to be showing you today are primarily ones that I consider, you know, watches that I um, I like their watches that I, I consider a part of my collection, um, ones that you know I, I intend on on keeping and wearing. Um, yeah, and these are not all of the watches that I have in the house, and these are not all of the watches that I've I've bought. Um, a lot of the watches that I have, they're ones that I bought specifically for the channel. Um, wrist size, I uh, got a question. There is uh, seven and a half inches um, for my wrist, and currently I'm wearing my Citizen Nighthawk which was the first watch that we're going to be looking at today. So, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and run through the watches that I got, and then I'll do a little bit of a question and answer afterwards. So try and hold your questions uh, till the end, and that way if anybody's watching this later and they just want to see the kind of state of the collection, um, they can watch that, and then, you know, for everyone who wants to have some fun, um, yeah, we'll, we'll stop and chat for a little bit after it's over, and you can ask questions about these specific watches, and I will try to answer them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the watches that I've gotten in, in three categories um, based on how I paid for them. So one of the most common you know, things that I see in the comments a lot is people look at the watches I have and they tell me, you know, if you would have just saved up your money, you could have gotten like a, you know, a luxury watch or a Rolex or something like that by now. And that's not actually the case, and you're going to see that as we go through. So I'm going to tell you um, how much I paid for each of these watches, and I'm going to go through them in three categories. The first category are watches that I purchased kind of out of pocket with my own personal money. Um, the second category are watches that once the channel started generating revenue, I was able to purchase with the revenue from the channel. Um, so that kind of opened up a new opportunity for me to um, to buy watches in, in ways that I wouldn't have been able to buy them before. And then the third and final category are, you know, as in the process of reviewing watches, I often get sent watches for free, which is one of the great perks of doing this. And so I've, you know, there's some of those watches that I have really held on to and really liked and, you know, wanted to kind of add those to my collection. Um, so that's the third category. So we're going to go through those three categories and I'm going to break down the price and show you how much, yeah, roughly my collection could be considered being worth in that. So um, I'm going to switch camera angles over to there. So bear with me for a second while I do that. Let me just give you guys something else to watch. And while I move my camera over. So yeah. Hopefully this is something that you guys will all be interested in today. Audio stuff or anything like that going on. Please, someone let me know in the chat. And thank you guys all for stopping by. Looks like we've got a pretty good crowd going today. So I got the camera rearranged now. And the first watch that we're going to take a look at is actually the first watch that I kind of, um, yeah, when I first started really deciding I wanted to like have a watch collection, um, one of the first ones that I got was the Citizen Nighthawk. 
And this is one that I uh, I was watching uh, the Time Teller. Jory Goodman uh, featured it on his channel. That's the first place I saw it. Um, really fell in love with it and still love it. It's just an amazing watch. You're getting um, yeah 200 meters of water resistance. Really great bracelet. Cool slide rule bezel. I just love the the busyness of it. Um, I've always been fascinated with aviation, so having that connection there was um, just aesthetically a great thing. And then the the big one for me was that GMT uh, feature that it has on it. It's got a really cool GMT complication on it. And this is one. So you know when I first started you know getting into watch collecting, I did not have a lot of money. This is something I really had to save up for. And yeah, so I think it was, um, I think I wound up you know, using some like credit card points that I had and a little bit of money saved up. And I think I even signed up for a new Amazon credit card to purchase this one on Amazon. And I think I got it for about uh, around $200. I think is how much I paid for this one. So this was the first one that I got and still have it. Um, it's not the first watch I bought, but the first, you know, when I really started wanting to have a watch collection, this was kind of the first one that I really targeted and went for. Second one that I have here, um, this is one that, you know, I don't really wear that often anymore. And this is one that I'm probably going to be looking to eventually find a new home for. Uh, let's see if we can get this one going. Uh, but this one, I, I saw it in uh, on Watch You Seek. Uh, there was a sponsored post, and I didn't even know anything about the watch world, so I didn't know that what a sponsored post was at the time. Um, thought it was a regular review, but really uh, they said good things about it because obviously Momentum wrote it. But um, I didn't. I don't have any regrets of buying this one. Um, this one particularly, um, it's named after the city in Japan that I was living in, uh, so that was one of the big things that attracted me. And I just I love the open heart. Um, I was new into watch collecting, but this is a, it's a 44 millimeter diameter watch that's kind of a dress watch style, and it's just kind of too large for what I normally wear. Um, so I don't wear it too often. Uh, this one was uh, one that I didn't expect to be able to get because the retail price was around $400. Um, Amazon had it listed for, I think, $120, 100, maybe, maybe it might have been $150 for this one that it dropped down to. Let's see if you can see it. Um, so I was able to snag it at that price and was really happy at that. Um, I think I had, at that point, a couple of other watches, and I sort of flipped some of them and sold them uh, used to be able to fund this one. Uh, and then this one is, this was my first kind of beater watch that I got. Uh, it's a Nixon Baja. It's got a ton of cool features. I think I picked this one up on eBay for about uh, 30 or 40 bucks or something like that. It's got a thermometer. It's got a, um, a compass, uh, timer, 100 meters of water resistance, all kinds of cool stuff. It's got a flashlight built into it. Um, so a lot of cool stuff. I don't actually wear this one very much anymore. It's really been taken over by the G-Shock is what I wear more. Um, so this is another one that's you know kind of just sitting in my box most of the time. Um, but I, I want to show you guys these because I still have them, and I'm, I want to give you kind of an idea of how much I spent on watches, including some of the mistakes that I made as I was going through. Uh, this one here is a Timex Weekender. So this is one I picked up right before I came to Japan. Um, I wanted to have something from America that I could bring back with me. Um, so I was I, I so a little bit of background. I'm, I'm a missionary. I live in Japan. Been living in Japan since 2013, but I spent a year back in the States, which, which is when I started this watch channel. I started this watch channel back in 2018. I was in the U.S. at the time. And then, actually, yeah, I think 2018, maybe end of 2017. I was in the States. And then after starting the channel, I moved back to Japan in the middle. So in the middle of that uh, process, I picked up this Timex Weekender on Amazon for about 40 bucks, and, uh, and grabbed this one. Uh, it's currently on a Vario uh, single-pass strap, so really cool. Uh, kind of single pass NATO that they've got. This is one of their twill ones that I think looks great. And this is one that I do still wear uh, from time to time. Um, I definitely like the Indiglo feature on the Timexes. This is another eBay purchase. Uh, this one it was a great value, but it was um, a watch that I saw on Watch Gang. So a lot of these dome crystals are hard to get in here. This is a William Gregor. Um, so uh, this one has a Seiko NH35 movement in it, 100 meters of water resistance, really cool dress watch style, and I liked the kind of single domed uh, mineral crystal it had in there. It gives a lot of interesting distortion on the dial. Um, so this was a cool watch. I wore it a lot when I first got it, um, but I don't really wear it too much anymore. Um, I think I picked it up on eBay for about 60 bucks. And yeah, this is the kind of thing that's like I bought it, I like it, but it's not really that uh, easy to... Uh, sell something like this that no one knows of the brand so it's it's not a lot of um yeah resale value there so this one was one that i'm kind of stuck with now um, but again kind of the goal here is i want to show you guys some of the watches that i'm stuck with some of the ones that i really love 
Uh, next up, we have this Guanxin. Um, I forget the model number. I should know this one, but you guys probably a lot of you recognize it. Um, this is still one of my favorite Chinese watches. Uh, you can pick this one up on AliExpress. Um, I just love the faceted bezel on here. Uh, it's got a sapphire crystal. It's got a Seiko NH35 inside. Again, this one, I've moved it over. The strap that comes on is absolutely terrible, so I've got this one currently on another Vario strap. This one's one of their uh, Harris Tweed straps. Uh, pick this one up on uh, actually Gearbest, I think, for about 50 bucks. All right, so now this is kind of one of my first really big purchases, and this is still one of my favorites. This was, you know, um, I kind of set my eyes on this as like if I was going to get a, any chronograph in, that I could ever possibly afford, this was going to be the one. And uh, yeah, I think it's the 16032. Got the reference number for me. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, but yeah, so this Bulova uh, Lunar Pilot, um, I was able to get this one on Amazon for $300. And actually, the way I managed to afford this one, um, I had uh, I used to be into a, a tabletop game called HeroScape. I don't know if any of you guys have heard it, uh, but it you know it's a miniature game, and I c collected a, a pretty big, good sized collection of it. Uh, and after I moved to Japan, I just didn't have anybody to play with anymore, uh, so I sold all of that on eBay. Um, I had to go back to the U.S. for a wedding, so I listed everything on U.S. eBay, sold it while I was in Japan, took all of it back with me put it in boxes and mailed all the items out and and then bought turned around and bought this one and then this Orient Polaris bought both of those while I was in the US for a wedding all in the span of about a week so it was a crazy week um, but I was able to get these two watches uh, during that time with the money that I got from the um, yeah from the sales of that tabletop game so that was cool I was just kind of shifting from away from one hobby into sort of this new one of watch collecting um, the bull of a moon watch just awesome chronograph it's a little bit on the large side but still um, I think one of the best values for money you can get. And then this Orient Polaris. Um, this was uh, my first automatic GMT and still, I think, actually my only automatic GMT. Um, you can't really see it too well in this lighting and on this camera, but the dial is very textured and detailed. Um, this one I picked up on uh, eBay used, I think, for about 150 bucks, so I got a great deal on it. Um, the strap was completely uh, worn out, so I had to replace the strap. A couple of you know scuffs and scratches on the case, but overall I'm really happy with this one. And this is my primary dress watch right now. This is the one that I wear most of the time uh, as a dress watch. Um, okay, so and these so these are the watches that I spent. This is basically all my own money. These are watches that I bought with um, yeah out of pocket expenses uh, before the channel was really generating any income of its own. So if I was not running a YouTube channel, there's a good chance this is what my watch collection would look like right now with, with these watches in it. So the next uh, three watches that we're going to look at, these are watches that I purchased with um, funds from the YouTube channel. Um, so once the YouTube channel started, uh, you know, once you hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, you can monetize your channel. Um, I started getting a little bit of ad revenue that way. And then uh, additionally, I signed up for Amazon Associates. So if any of you guys uh, see an Amazon link, it always says this is an affiliate link. That means that if you click on it and use it, I get a small commission. And so I get some kickback from Amazon if you guys buy watches through my channel on there. So thank you guys to anybody who has done that. Um, but yeah, so with that revenue, um, I started getting able to buy some watches. And most of the time that was going towards watches I thought people would be interested in seeing reviews of. Um, this one in particular is one that I wanted for myself. Um, I saw it pop up on the Watch Gang wheel, and I spun the wheel knowing I was going to get this one pretty much. I managed to get it for $280, which is a great deal. This one normally retails around $400. Um, this one's a, yeah, it's a, it's a Laco, uh, you know, made in Germany, but with Japanese movement inside. It's got a Miyota 8200 series movement, so one of the older ones does not uh, hack. So a little bit of a, a bummer on the movement. But the rest of the watch is amazing. Um, the dial is just incredibly intricate. And I, this is one that I think a lot of people don't get. And, you know, just if you look at the specs on paper, it doesn't make sense for the cost that they're charging. Um, you know, but having it, it's still one of my favorite watches. And, yeah, so it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's a little bit of a hard one to explain. But it's, it's a really beautiful watch, uh, really interesting style and design, and I really uh, enjoy it. Um, but yeah, this is one of the first ones that I purchased with the uh, the revenue from the channel, kind of for my own collection. Uh, next up is this Orient Star um, Sports Outdoors. Let's see if I can get the 
date changed over there. And this is one that I picked up on it, uh, Japanese Amazon over here. So this is, you know, th there's a lot of times I see a watch and I'm like, okay, I'm never going to be able to afford that. These ones they retailed for around six or seven hundred bucks, and that was just, you know, way out of my budget. Uh, but on, in Japan, it started retailing at that price, and then I saw them drop down to about three hundred and twenty dollars, and so that was a lot more manageable. And again, I, the channel was generating revenue by then, so I used some of the channel revenue to purchase this one. Let's see if I can get it in focus. The glare is a little bit tough there. There you go. Um, yeah, this is just a really beautiful watch. It's a, a great size. The finishing is uh, really well done. The loom is great. The design is is very nice. I really like that kind of 12, 3, 6, and 9 Arabics. Uh, very legible and the dial is just this really beautiful deep dark blue color. Um, just a, a great everyday watch. And yeah, you kind of dress it up, dress it down a little bit. It's a, it's a perfect size for me and my wrist as well. Um, has a, a lot of inspiration from like a Flieger watch. It looks a lot like a pilot's watch, but it's, it's billed more as a, a field watch. It's got 100 meters of water resistance. It's got a screw down crown. Um, so really, really cool watch. Really enjoy this one. One of my favorites there. Okay, and then the, so the last one that I currently have kind of as part of my collection um, is this G-Shock. Cassie Oak, this yellow one. This is my beater watch. Um, was just wearing this one today when I went to the beach. And yeah, this is one of the watches that I wear the most because um, I don't have to worry at all about it getting broken. Um, probably going to be uh, wearing this one a lot in the summer um, as it warms up here and going to the beach more. Um, but just really fun watch, really durable, um, really light and comfortable on the wrist. Cool shape. Um, but yeah, really cool watch. like this one too. Okay, so these are the three watches that I've. Oops, let's see the movies up. So these three I purchased for myself. Um, oh, sorry, I got this one. I think for about $150, I think on Japanese Amazon. Um, so these these three were purchased with uh, funds from the channel. So thank you guys for watching those ads and using Amazon. I was able to get these ones through that. Um, yeah. So these are the watches that I I actually spent money on that that I kind of have that I consider in my collection. Again, I have more watches. Um, here in the room. I have a lot more watches that I've been sent for review. Um, I have some other watches that I have um, purchased, but I purchased them primarily with the idea of reviewing them here on the channel, not necessarily for my own um, personal collection. So I'm trying to you know, categorize with that. So these next three watches that we're going to look at last three, these are ones that were sent in for review um, that I decided that I, I really liked and wanted to keep and have held on to, and I still wear them a lot. And we'll, uh, we'll jump through those. Um, so first up was uh, this Spinnaker Flus. Uh, so this was the first free watch that I got uh, after I started the channel. I think I had a little bit over a thousand subscribers, maybe closer to two thousand uh, when Spinnaker did this. Spinnaker is really, um, really good at getting their watches out to reviewers, even some of the smaller ones, um, which actually is is a big help, especially for smaller channels. Like you know, when I was, you know, when the channel was uh, obviously when the channel was below a thousand subscribers, it was a huge challenge just to be able to get watches to feature because I had to do everything out of pocket and my budget was, you know, I think I had somewhere around $50 a month was like my budget for anything. Um, so it's really hard to, to get anything on the channel. So once um, brands are interested in sending you stuff, it makes it a lot easier to um, to get some stuff on the channel. But not only that, just to, to experience different watches and to be able to develop more of a uh, opinion about things that's more informed. So I was really um, helpful and I've, you know, continue to uh, receive watches from Spinnaker. I've got another one coming up for review, the Flus Chronograph version of this um, that they just sent in. So I really appreciate um, them that they've done for that. Uh, but this one in particular is still my favorite of their watches. Um, this is the the uh, Flus Automatic. Um, it's a kind of a Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms homage and just a really great looking watch. I um, currently have it on this pearl on strap from Stratville. Um, but this one, yeah. Kind of a soft spot because this is the first first watch that I got as a yeah for free that someone sent in uh, to review, and as a YouTube watch reviewer guy, that's like an incredibly exciting thing when that happens for the first time. Um, but besides that, it's a great watch and it's still one that I wear quite frequently. Uh, next up is this uh, diver from the Swiss watch company. Uh, this one is one that I really um, yeah I think when I first got my hands on it. 
Um, first saw it, the design didn't click with me instantly, but the more I've had it, the more I've worn it, the more I really uh, like and appreciate the design. Um, and then on top of it, just the, the build quality and the components is uh, pretty amazing as well. You know, Sapphire Crystal, Salita SW200 movement inside, just really solid bezel, really solid bracelet. They upgraded the clasp, so I purchased that, but they now have a clasp that has, um, you know, kind of this sort of automatic ratcheting system where you can adjust it without using any tools. Um, it is a little bit on the large side. I think it's a 43, 44 millimeter diameter. It's a little bit big, but ceramic bezel on there. And yeah, just one of my, yeah, one of my favorite watches. Um, I, I usually keep it on the, uh, the bracelet all the time. Um, it is a large watch. It definitely has a lot of wrist presence, but for a big, solid diver, this one's 300 meters of water resistance. Um, and the, the loom is, is pretty fantastic on as well. Um, just a, a great watch. This one I think retails for um, about $500 right now. If you can get it, they, they sell out often. I think they're sold out right now, but I, they should be getting a restock uh, later this summer. Um, one of the fun things about you know running the channel is getting to know the guys who run the brands, and I've gotten to know a lot of the guys over at Switch, Swiss Watch Company, uh, especially um, Josh, who runs the social media, is a really great guy and always very friendly. And I've actually learned a lot from him, not just about their watches, but about watches in general. Um, they have a great channel that's really interesting. If you're interested in learning about like the watch industry and how watches are made and what goes into them, it's a great channel for that in addition to learning about their particular watches. So if you're interested in that, definitely recommend you guys subscribe to their channel. Um, and then last uh, is this uh, Yama Navy Graph, which I just reviewed. I think this is my most recent review. And yeah, this was another one that um, yeah, I was sent in for free. I think this one retails for about $750. Uh, and this is, yeah, this is, again, this is the kind of thing that I you know, probably would never have been able to afford on my own. So huge shout out to Yama for sending this in because this is great. Um, but it's, it's uh, on top of it, it's, it's an amazing watch. I really like this one. Um, I, you know, I go through honeymoon phase a lot, so this is the newest watch that I've got. It's currently my, my favorite, but that could largely be because it's the newest. Um, but I just love the size and the form factor. Um, you know, I, I really like both of these watches, but you can see the size difference. And I think, you know, I'm moving more towards slightly smaller watches. There's still sometimes where I feel like a small, smaller watch. This is a 39 millimeter watch. Um, and I think it looks really good on my wrist size, which is odd because normally like 42 millimeter is kind of more what I prefer. Throw that one on. Um, but you can see, I think it wears really well. It's, it's, it's really comfortable at this size too. Um, but yeah, and then on top of just the comfort and the form factor, um, I love that this is, you know, it's coming out of its own heritage. It's not like a, you know, it's not um, an homage of anything. You know, the, you can see the inspiration is more from Yema's own um, heritage as a French watch manufacturer. Um, this is, you know, one of their models, I think, from the 70s that they're reissuing. Um, so the design is, it's not anything like, a, you know, it's not like a lot of the, you know, Swiss watches uh, that are out there or watches that are trying to look like Swiss watches. It's definitely got its own character there, especially with the, uh, yeah, those colors and the yellow hands and things. Um, but it's just a really, I think it's, you know, it looks like a very, just a, a classic, modest looking watch that wears great. It's got 300 meters of water resistance. It's nice and thin. It's only, I think it's less than 12 millimeters thick. Um, just a, a really great um, all around watch. And I think it looks really good. Okay, so that is my watch collection. That's kind of what I've got now and what it looks like. I don't know if you can see all of those in here. I can back this up a little bit. Yeah, so um, I'm going to throw up a slide. And I want to break down the cost here because, again, what um, a lot of people will say is, okay, so this is the watch collection, and, yeah, if, if, you, if I had paid retail for all of these watches, if I had paid retail for all of them, and if I had actually bought all of them with my own money, then, yeah, conceivably I could have, um, had enough money to buy like a luxury watch. Um, but let me give you guys a little bit of a breakdown as far as the cost goes and how much money I have sunk into this collection and see if we can break this down a bit. Okay, um, so if you talk about the money that I spent out of pocket on this, so if I was not running a YouTube channel, if it was just uh, the watches that I was able to purchase for myself, it would be these ones, uh, it would be the yeah, those, that top row, um, it would have been uh, $980. So that's about how much I have spent out of my own money in the last um, two years or so since I've started watch collecting, and that has gotten me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty
got eight watches um, in there. So, you know, some of those watches are, um, you know, some of them, are, so it's these ones up here. Some of them are watches that I still love and wear. Some of them are kind of mistakes, like, you know, like these ones, these three over here, I don't really wear that much anymore. I spent money on them. I'm probably not going to get much out of it. But even still, you know, you know, $980 over two years um, is, is not, I don't think it's that much money. Um, I don't think I've spent that much. And even if I had not spent that, if I only had $980, um, you know, would I want one $980 watch? You know, I don't even know what I would get necessarily. So I, you know, I, I feel pretty comfortable with the, that collection that I got um, there, even with the couple of mistakes there. Now, if you throw in the money that I spent um, from the channel revenue, so I spent $790 on watches um, out of the channel revenue, and that gets me these additional three watches. Flip back over. Uh, so if you add in these three that I spent with the channel revenue, so this is, you know, again, conceivably, um, this is money that I spent. I could have chosen to spend on something different. You add another $790 in there to get those ones into the mix. Even still, I'm up to $1,700 total money that I have spent on this collection. Um, and yeah, that, that puts me up into, I might be able to get like an Oris or something like that. And you know, even still, I'd, I'd rather have the watches that I have there than one, you know, one good watch from Oris. Even though there are a lot of cool watches from Oris that I would be interested in. Um, but then, if you do throw in the final three watches, the watches that I was um, given to review at the retail cost, you know, those ones are going to bump the total value of the collection up to three thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Um, if you throw in those ones as well, uh, but you know, that's assuming you paid retail for them. Uh, which I probably wouldn't have if I, you know, was going to buy them because I try not to pay retail as much as I can. Um, but yeah, even even with all of that, um, I, I can't really consider that my spending it because I couldn't really. I guess I could try and resell them, and then again I could try and resell them and, and you know get up to three grand. I don't know what's that putting me up into. Something like a, um, you know, maybe like a Tudor or might be able to get a, my hands on a Black Bay or something like that. Um, even still, um, I, w I would rather have this watch collection uh, than like a single, you know, Tudor Black Bay or maybe an Omega or something like that. Um, I, I'm really enjoying the variety that I have here, um, the different occasions that I can wear these. And so, yeah, even, even, even if this was, I could make a dollar for dollar trade. Uh, which I can't, but if, even if I could, I don't think I would. I think I would still stick with, you know, what I got here. And even with the, you know, a little bit of mistakes I've made here and there, I'm pretty happy with what I got. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the state of the collection. Let me go ahead and see if I can flip back over to the chat. You guys have been chatting away over here while I've been talking. Uh, but if you guys have any particular questions about any of these watches, um, go ahead and start firing those over while I read through and see what I've been missing while you guys have been going. Seems like everybody's having a good time so far. Um, I'm going to keep the ca camera s centered on the watches for a couple more minutes um, in case anybody has any questions about any of these. But um, I don't know if you guys can see, where's the... Oh, this is a new AliExpress pickup I just got. I got it. I think this was like 25 bucks for this watch winder, which is currently running on batteries. Shinola and Vostok. Um, Shinola, yeah, as uh, David Williams asks, uh, my opinion on Shinola and Vostok. I don't have any experience with either of those. Um, Vostok is on my list. I'm, I'm going to get a Vostok this year um, just because I have to, and I haven't looked at one yet, and I want to see what all the fuss is about. Uh, they, they appear to be uh, really uh, unique watches, um, real cult following, and I'm yeah definitely interested in kind of yeah getting a, a Russian automatic watch. Um, most of the like the the Amphibia designs and the Commandersky, the base model ones, most of those designs don't really look that attractive to me. Some of the more uh, higher level ones I think are pretty cool, um, and I've seen some Commandierskis that have like um, GMTs and stuff that I think are really cool, great value for the money. 
and then Shinola, yeah, just I've heard too many things about the cost. I've heard they're getting better, um, but overall, it just seems like you know you're paying primarily for the supposed American heritage that is a little bit iffy. Is kind of what I've heard, but I don't I don't have any firsthand experience with Shinola. Uh, the strap on the Guanchin is a uh, Harris Tweed strap from Vario. You can see that, but that is Harris Tweed. This is their 2.01. Uh, which has leather keepers on it. It's a little bit thinner too, and definitely an upgrade. It's a very unique strap, but some of a uh, some of uh, you know, a little bit of a, a premium cost on too. Uh, Opinion on Orient Star with their newer collections going main, more mainstream. I've been paying more attention, um, yeah, to their sports watches, and they look cool. Again, I I really like this one. Um, I I like what they've done with the design. I like you know I, a lot of people don't like that it's half Flieger and half Field Watch. I do. Um, I think it works in this case, um, and it's just you know highly legible. It's comfortable, great finishing, um, cool in-house movement inside it. Um, great watch. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of keeping. I'd, I'd be interested in checking out some of Orient Star's uh, dress watches too. But um, yeah, I've already got one Orient Star, so I'm still kind of branching out, trying to experience some other things. But um, Orient's really um, there's a lot of great deals on Orient here in Japan. They're a great budget option, um, so I'm constantly tempted to pick up Orient watches. Thoughts on Mercer? Um, yeah, it's another Micromat I'd be interested in checking out. There's so many watches out there. Um, but yeah, I've seen some of their stuff. They look really cool. I uh, just haven't gotten around to getting one of them yet. I've kind of got a list. Um, but yeah, that's I've heard good things. They seem like they're really well built and they look great. Um, so yeah, Craig. Um, I, I like the looks of Mercer, but I don't have any personal experience with them. Fearless Eagle buying a ProPlof case design with NH35. Is that the um, Spinnaker Dumas? Is that the one you're talking about? That's Spinnaker makes an NH35 ProPlof case design um, that I've checked out. That's pretty cool. They're kind of a micro brand. Um, what else we got? No wind up or mechanical watches. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot. Like a lot of these have hand winding. Uh, this is the only. <laughs> I've, I've wanted to get one. This is the only uh, hand-wound mechanical watch I got. I think I picked up for about $17 on GearBest, maybe t maybe less. My uh, eight-year-old loves this watch. He puts it on and wears it a lot. Um, any Seikos that I'm looking at? I, ha I just recently picked up a Seiko Samurai. And um, so where is that? I've got the Seiko Samurai somewhere around here. Um, I recently got a Seiko Samurai because I've been getting all of these dive watches from micro brands that I've checked out, and I've didn't have much experience with Seikos. The Samurai is my favorite one of Seiko's kind of entry level dive watches, so I picked up one of those, and I got this one. Um, really impressed. Um, I love it. Again, I picked this one up primarily to for the channel's sake. I'm still not 100%. I mean, I'm I'm probably going to keep it around just for comparison, no matter what, and I do wear it. Um, but I didn't include in the in the state of the collection because, again, it's not one that I really got for myself. Um, I'm, you know, you, I, I, dive watches are the most popular watches. They're the ones I get sent in the most, so I, I have a lot of dive watches, but they're not my favorite style. I'm much more interested in field watches and fleegers, which I, you know, so when I'm, usually if I'm spending my own money, those are more what I'm looking for because um, I already have a lot of dive watches. Uh, yeah. The new Seiko SRP SKX replace. So, are you talking about Theo? Are you talking about the um, the five KX with the bezel, or the new new one that just came out? That's the same thing. That's smaller, like the forty millimeter without the bezel. Um, I wouldn't get the. Like personally, I would not go with the um, the five KX, the SK, the SKX, uh, the Seiko five with the bezel. To me, that just doesn't seem like um, a great value. I uh, but the new ones without the bezel, I really like. Like, and they don't have them in Japan yet. I haven't been able to find the the new uh, the new Seiko fives that are basically like an SKX but smaller without a bezel. Um, that's one I'm really interested in. 
Uh, but they don't have them here in Japan yet, so I haven't been able to pick one up, but I'm, I'm tempted on it. I'm tempted to get one of those. Um, Fearless Eagle, do you think I should get a GBX100 or Orient Dive Watch like the Ray or Mako? GBX100. Oh, I don't... I'm not that good. For, okay, what is a GBX100? Is that a G-Shock or... Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with the GBX100. Uh, the Ray or the Mako, I mean, at that price, they, they're pretty amazing prices. Um, I've been tempted to get one of those, but like with the Kamaso out now, I, you know, I really like Sapphire Crystals, so um, if you can spring for the extra 100 bucks to get the Kamaso over the Ray or the Mako, I'd say it's worth it. But if you're looking for just a budget beater kind of watch, I think either the Ray or the Mako are great, uh, great options there. Yeah, Bertucci. I've seen some cool field watches from Bertucci. Um, that's another one that I'd like to check out. I mean, I think I would say that a lot. There's a lot of watches that I'd like to check out. And hopefully I'll keep running this channel and keep getting to check out more watches. Um, would I consider micro brands as fashion watches? Some of them, not all of them. Um, yeah, so like, you know, this is a micro brand. Um, and this is a pretty, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider this a fashion watch at all. It's a pretty hardcore dive watch. Um, really solidly built, um, but yeah, there's definitely some fashion watch or some you know micro brands out there that are more like fashion watches, and that's the tricky thing with micro brands is it's um, it's hard to um, yeah hard to make that call. What's the difference between a micro or between a a fashion watch and a um, yeah in a in a micro brand? Um, yeah, so I, I would say a fashion watch is, is a watch that's primarily selling you a style or a look or a um, brand. Um, if you're getting it primarily for the look, which, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, okay? I think that's totally fine. But if your interest is not in the the watch itself, if it's not in the, the heritage of the watch or the mechanics of the watch or the design of the watch, if it's purely in the style of the watch or the brand recognition that you get from the watch, um, to me, that's a fashion watch. I guess by that definition, a lot of people might look at Rolexes like fashion watches, which they're not. But um, it's it's they look at them in a similar way, where people go with it because of the brand and because of the um, reputation and because wearing it gives you this, you know, this look and this prestige. Um, but to me, that's like fashion watches are only that. They don't have anything else behind them. Um, that's my uh, consider a fully. Uh, silver gold, I'm considering a fully illuminated dial like the Laco, but in your experience, how often uh, has it been useful? Um, it is m easier to read in the dark than non-fully illuminated dial. It's definitely a step up in legibility at night. And, uh, you know, a lot of it's going to depend on the, the amount of loom. So if it's if it's a well-made one, if the if it's, you know, you can get a fully loom dial that doesn't last more than 10 minutes. Um, but this Laco lasts a long time, like most of the night, no problem. And it's super bright. So if you get a good fully loom dial, uh, yeah, they're great. They're, they're really functional. Um, they are noticeable. So if you do walk into a dim room with that, it's going to light up and people will see it. So, um yeah, so I don't know that that's maybe the only concern with it. If it's you know if you're treating it more like a dress watch and you walk into a dim room, that might look odd on the wrist. But other than that, I think it's uh, uh, I think it's okay. Uh, did I miss anything here? What NATO is on the Timex? Yeah, that's a that's a Vario as well. Uh, that's one of their twill straps. I th they were selling these for like ten bucks on sale this summer. I don't know if they're still running this summer sale but the, yeah it's, it's a really cool little single pass uh would i mod a watch i haven't yet i've that's something i've been interested in um one of my first mod products of projects if i ever get around to it um i'd love to swap the handset maybe even like you know since i'm not really using this watch anymore maybe try and put this handset in this watch um i think the hands are off on this one i don't think it's the right hands for this style watch it looks okay um it's still cool but i think these dolphin hands would be more appropriate so if I could figure out how to do that, I might try it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm interested in trying to do some modding, but I haven't gotten there yet. I haven't done it. Uh, do you got homages in my collection? Um, I've been tempted to buy homages before. Um, so this one is an homage. This is a very reminiscent of a Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, um, which you know is, is a lesser known watch. It's not like a Rolex homage. You know, most most people on the street would never know what this was referencing so i have less of a problem um 
yeah, I'm not as interested in homages. I don't have any big problem with them, um, but I just, you know, they just don't appeal to me as much as something with an original design. Um, but uh, dude, there's, you know, especially like uh, the the cheap Chinese ones, that it's, it's it's like a fun thing. It's like you know, you, you, there's these luxury watches that you admire that you're never going to be able to afford. So buying the hundred dollar version of it and being able to, you know, just play around with it and have some fun with it is is appealing. But I don't know if I would seriously wear something like that. Um, I would want if it was a, if it was a high quality homage. Um, yeah, and I, I know like there's a lot of respect for Submariner homages. Um, I yeah you know, I probably wouldn't have a problem wearing a, a decent Rolex Submariner homage. What else we got here? Uh, okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and swap this camera back around. So give me a second, and then yeah, we can chat a little bit longer. That'll make it a little bit easier for me looking back and forth. So give me one second to swap the camera back. the chat a little bit easier now too yeah so that is uh, yeah that's my state of the collection um, so again the channel just hit 20,000 subscribers going back over my statistics um, I think I so I think it took me about a one year to get to a thousand subscribers and then now I'm about two and a half years into it so if you look at my um, graph the first year was really low and then the second year was a lot of a lot of growth so I think I, I hit if I remember correctly, I think I hit 10,000 subscribers towards the beginning of this year or about four months ago and then doubled again so it's been going a lot quicker lately which is cool so if any of you guys out there are doing YouTube channels don't get discouraged if the first year or so you're not seeing anything because that's how mine was um, yeah my my graph for literally my first year is, is basically flatlined <laughs> um, Brooklyn Brooklyn watch company uh, yeah so from what I understand they're owned by Joma shop um, and you know I think Joma shop they know uh, you know I, I would say a lot of those I would consider more kind of fashion watches but I'd say they're fairly priced fashion watches and they're pretty well made. They, you know, a lot of them will have uh, Swiss movements inside. Some of them are even automatic. Um, they, they look like a pretty good value. Um, I'm probably going to try and get some of those in to check them out to see, yeah, how good they are. But yeah, they're. I think you know, if you're looking for an inexpensive kind of fashion watch style thing, I think they're you know a good one to check out. But yeah, I believe they are owned by Joma Shop. No date dress watch under two hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, yeah, dress watches under two hundred dollars. I always immediately think Orient. Um, obviously, the Bambinos are big, but um, there's a new Symphony line, which I think they, I think they're mostly date versions. But the the Symphony Two, I think you can usually find those for under two hundred. That'll get you an automatic movement and a sapphire crystal and a really clean design in that price range. Um, that Seiko Solar Tank Homage, that one's really cool too. Um, if you like that square style, that's one that I've came this close to buying a couple of times, and I would definitely um, be interested in that one. Um, just a really cool classic look. Um, but yeah, I think that I think that Seiko Tank model is, is a really cool one. Um, as far as Eco Drives, I don't know off the top of my head. You know, there's there's a million different Eco Drives. So I'm sure if you looked around uh, on Amazon, you could find some. And you know. As far as qual build quality goes, um, the Citizen Eco drives, they're all really good. So, you, you know, it's more just down to finding one that you like the look of. Yeah, four months and one point, yeah, 1,680, sir. That's great. 
it's a lot faster than I did. So who knows? You might be up to like, yeah, no Viper. You're going to be passing me up here pretty soon. Yeah, why don't I review the Citizen Pro Master Diver Mar Marina again? Um, I get I've got so many divers. I'm just I'm just more interested in trying different ones. Um, yeah, the the Citizen divers look great. Um, they're yeah, that's the kind of the one um, that I haven't looked at yet. Uh, but again, it's yeah, it's it's just not as high on my radar. I'm I'm more interested in trying to get some like field watches and stuff in here. But um, if I was gonna really dive down into divers, that definitely be one to to check out. Only keep one of my watches. Um, I would I would probably go with the um, probably go with the Orient. Um, this would be a tough one. I mean, again, the the Yema is the most expensive one I got. I got it for free. That one would be tempting. Um, I like that this one has a timing bezel, and which is great. You know, I I, I like having a timer, but it doesn't have a date, so. I, if I was going to keep one watch all the time, I would like to have a date. Um, but yeah, it would probably be tough between those two. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's, I don't remember, the moment, but yeah, Citizen makes some cool EcoDrive field watches. Would be another interesting one to check out. Um, right now, I just did my schedule. I've got basically a review or a video scheduled every week until October. Um, so I appreciate the suggestions, but um, I probably won't be able to get to any of them until the fall. I'm trying to, to get caught up a little bit. Um, but yeah, so we, we, yeah, we've got some interesting stuff coming in and some interesting ones to take a look at. So definitely stay tuned to those. Why do, yeah, why do they fake the $10 Casio? I don't get that. Yeah, you just, just get the $10, have to get, get the F91W. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see, you know, the, the what, the Scheme Shock, the metal ones for, where you get a, you know, a metal G-Shock for 20 bucks. That's a great deal, you know, save $400. Um, but, yeah, I don't know why you would, why you would sell a, Ten dollar Casio for seven dollars, and why someone would buy that? Uh, you know, I've seen that Bear Gryllis watch um, a lot, but I don't know anything about it. Oh wait, no, wait, no, 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 no automatic for under two fifty. I'm thinking of a different one. No, I don't know of that one. T any tough or Bear Gryllis? Oh, you're asking if I know of any. You're looking for. Okay, so yeah, I, I saw there's that um, or Luminox one that's been sent around that's endorsed by Bear Gryllis. I've seen that one. Um, Bear Grylls with orange and black coloration, automatic movement, price of under 250 Yeah, if you're looking for a, an automatic watch under 250 the only ones I know of are going to be Orient or um, Chinese watches. So if you, you, know, you might, yeah, I'd, I'd be looking at AliExpress if that's really something. But yeah, that orange and black color scheme, something tough like that. Yeah, those are hard to find in that price range. Um, there's probably some quartz watches you could get in that price range, but automatics would be a little bit tough. Um, would I be going up in price range as I earn more from the channel? I'm I'm trying not to. That's that's not my intention. Um, for a couple of reasons. One is, um, I th I think that there's a need for people to stay in this affordable section of the market, and just that's that like the luxury watches just they really aren't me i mean like the, it's the kind of thing that i like i i would feel like for me and i get everyone's different and this is not i don't want to put down anybody who buys luxury watches but me personally i i would to me it would feel like a bad use of my money to spend money on a, a luxury watch i would i just wouldn't do it um so you know uh i i'm not necessarily you know it kind of puts me in an interesting position because now with the channel generating revenue conceivably i could i could save up and, and buy a luxury watch and I, I wouldn't feel as guilty because it's coming from you know it's sort of like this hobby is sort of now self-funding so maybe you know the the moral factor isn't much of a play um, but even still um the the other factor is just like so um my job i'm, I'm a missionary i'm like i'm, I'm a i'm starting a church so i'm, I'm um, kind of pastoring a, a little church plant out here um and i, I never the the whole pastors wearing Rolexes just doesn't sit well with me. Um, so I, you know, I, I would feel 
weird wearing a luxury watch, even knowing that I was able to pay for it, not from donations, but from, you know, this watch YouTube channel. But, uh, you know, how other people would view me and things like that, it's just, yeah, it, it doesn't really make sense. So I'm not that interested in going to luxury watches. Um, the, the one thing I would consider is um, if I could, you know, purchase one to be able to make a valid comparison because, like, you know, um, you know, so take, like, what? Let's take this Yemo, right? This is the most expensive watch that I've reviewed and, and gotten to really experience. And that that's beneficial. I can make comparisons. I can, you know, look at something like the Spinnaker, and I can see the difference. I can see the difference in quality. I can, you know, form an opinion on it. Um, I couldn't tell you if this is as good as a, as a Black Bay or something. I mean, I, I assume it's not because the Black Bay costs way more. But, um yeah, so it would be interesting to get my hands on a luxury watch and have some experience with it so that I can make an informed opinion about affordable lug affordable watches because it would be cool, like, if I came across a watch that was did happen to be, like, a $500 watch that literally was the same quality as a $5,000 watch, that would be something I would want to be able to say, but I can't, I can't say that right now because I don't have any direct hands-on experience. Um, with luxury watches. So to be able to make a comparison like that, to maybe get one and wear it for a couple months and then probably sell it, um, I think, or or even just hold it in a little box to have for making videos and comparison, that might be the only way I, I would really think about getting a luxury watch. Uh, would be more, again, for the channel. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I, I definitely want to keep it focused on the affordable section. Um, and again, you guys, you can see in the way that I personally spend the money that I've you know, my out-of-pocket money and even the channel revenue, um, I've never spent more than, I think, I think the most expensive, the most money I've ever spent on a watch, personally, was um, for that Orient. Where'd it go? I just lost my favorite, oh, there it is. Yeah, this one. Um, so about $350. So I've never spent more than $350 of my own money on a watch before. And that gives you an idea of kind of what I would be doing if I were not running a YouTube channel. It would be about the same. Um, yeah, where was I? Where, sorry, went on a long rabbit trail with that one. Where are we? Manual one, but yeah, Siegel 1963. I ordered one. So we're going to be like, uh, this week I was supposed to be doing the um, chronograph watch of the month and I ordered a Siegel 1963 off AliExpress to feature that in that video and it being AliExpress and uh, global pandemic sh shipping's tough and it hasn't come in yet so I'm probably going to delay the chronograph watch of the month a little bit and wait for that to come in hopefully it'll come in within a couple weeks and I can do it um, I do not know what my grail watch is um, and again kind of for the same reasons like um, I don't I don't necessarily want to have a super expensive watch um, but if I was going to have a Grail watch, it would be something that conceivably I would buy or and and wear. Um, but yeah, I honestly do not know what my Grail watch is. Um, there are there are watches that I like, but again, because I'm I'm I I would feel weird wearing most luxury watches. Um, I, I haven't seriously considered ones that I would want. Um, but yeah, I, the, I always go, fall back. I really like the Rolex Explorer too. Um, it would definitely be a GMT. Um, because I live in Japan, I have friends back, you know, in California. I love being able to track a second time zone. Uh, so yeah. Um, other YouTube channels that I like. Who do I got here in the chat tonight? My favorite ones today. Number one Viper. I think I saw Watch Lounge in here. Anybody who is here in the chat watching my video, other YouTubers, you guys are my favorites today. <laughs> who else is here? Anyways, I hope, hope I'm not missing anybody else. Um, but yeah, if there's any other YouTubers here in the chat, shout out to you guys and feel free to post your names up there. Um, favorite YouTubers that I like other than that. Uh, so uh, Relative Time is probably my favorite other one uh, just because he and I both started our channels around the same time. And I think back when we both had less than 200 subscribers, we kind of started chatting a little bit. Uh, and we would, yeah, we'd offer each other suggestions and so it was really cool that both of us are still doing it and both of our channels kind of are kind of reached that critical mass where we're kind of doing well. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I really like uh, Shane's channel. I still chat with him a lot on Instagram and stuff. We've done a couple of uh, kind of mini collaborations and stuff. So 
Really like his channel. Um, yeah, and then a lot of the other ones I like are just guys that I've made friends with. Um, Miguel over at SoCal Watch Reviews. Um, watch his stuff. Um, Average Joe Watch Reviews. Um, he's a good guy. Talk with him a lot. Um, who else? Uh, Ross. P. Ross over at Ross Wristwatch Love. Uh, really cool guy. Really cool uh, collection. Cool perspective. Um, so, yeah, those are the ones that I... I know I'm missing. I, I'm sorry for all the guys. Not um, new one that uh, I just have been watching and uh, friends with um, Alton over at Half Past Blog. Um, he's actually a pastor in Canada, so it's, it's a lot of pastors in. It's a surprising amount of pastors in the watch industry, guys. You'd be surprised. So be careful what you say. Watch your mouths. You know, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, yeah, uh, so but Alton over at Half Past Blog. Um, he just he's been on Instagram for a long time. Got a really good Instagram. Uh, account and he's been switching over doing some YouTube too and his videos are great I think he's off to a great start um, who else obviously for bigger channels I like um, yeah just one more watch I like Jody um, time can tell her Jory Goodman um, it's one that I've been watching for a long time one of the first ones I started watching um, I, I like uh, watch it all about Josh over watch it all about his is one that I've been watching his channel for a long time and I really respect his uh, his uh, take on watches. He's got a, a lot of good insight, and his photography is great. Um, I get a lot of inspiration watching his and trying to emulate that. Um, so there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of good YouTube channels out there. Um, affordable hand wound watch. I'm looking for one. I don't know what a good affordable hand wound watch is. If you guys uh, know of any, um, the only one that I've considered a couple of times is the Orient Monarch. But that one, I if I if I want to get a hand wound watch, I want to get a really thin one. Like that's why I think one of the main benefits. I'd like to get a, a hand wound dress watch that's really thin, like under 10 millimeters, if I could find one. Um, I think Siegel makes a couple of them that I've been interested in, um, so it's, you know I might check out one of those. Uh, what church? Uh, so I am. Uh, I'm working with a Baptist church, Japanese. It's a Japanese church. Um, it's a Baptist church. They are planting a new church in one of the cities that was hit by the tsunami back in 2011. So they started doing relief work in the city and then to kind of, you know, continue having, um, yeah, trying to support the city, they decided to do a church plant. And so I was working with the mother church for five years. And then when they decided to do the church plant, they asked me to come down and help out with that. So I'm kind of serving sort of a pastoral role um, there. I'm not officially ordained yet, but supposedly that's somewhere in the works. So, yeah. So it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a Baptist church. Uh, what next? Uh, future plans for the channel. Um, more of the same. Um, one one of the future things I'd like to maybe start doing some of these more uh, live streams. I've kind of, you know, when I do a video to put out on YouTube, um, you know, I do a lot of you know different you know B roll and shooting different angles of the watch and macros and all that. And it takes a lot of time. Um, it usually takes me a good two weeks um, from start to finish to get a. a a review put together so I, I my capacity is not like there's a lot of other guys that are pumping out videos like every day or you know a couple times a week I, you know I can barely manage doing one video a week um, and so there's a lot of like smaller things that I'd like to just talk about that I just don't have time to do so I thought it'd be cool to do more of these live streams where it's a little bit more informal a little bit less polished and be able to hit some of the topics that I haven't been able to hit in like a full featured video so that's one of the new things I'd, I'd like to think I don't know how often I'll do it probably a couple times a year probably wouldn't commit to every month um, but yeah I've got some ideas for live streaming and stuff like that um, Teddy Balsazar um, I hope Teddy's not watching this I'm not I'm not a huge fan of Teddy he's he's okay he's I, I definitely um, yeah he's, he's done a great job with his channel um, but yeah just I'm, I don't always agree with all of his opinions and yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk about him. But yeah, no, Teddy's not my favorite, but I am subscribed to him. I do watch a lot of his videos. Urban Gentry, um, he was one of the first ones that I started watching as well. Um, really, um, yeah, I think he's great at getting people sucked into watches, and he has a real just enthusiasm that's kind of infectious. Um, but a lot of his videos, they just, they kind of, like now, I feel like I just don't have the time to sit down and watch them, which I'm, my videos are long too. But um, yeah, a lot of his stuff is is kind of, yeah, he goes on a lot of rabbit trails and stuff, so I just don't have as much time to watch his uh, so much today. Uh, what else do we got? Yeah. 
Yeah, Jory's rants are great. Watches are a treasure. Yeah, great. Yeah, everyone, I haven't checked out your channel. I'm going to go check it out afterwards. I try and subscribe to everybody's channel because I love keeping tabs on uh, yeah, what everybody's doing. And I especially love seeing new guys getting at it. Um, make it just the watch chat on Discord or another platform. Um, I've seen guys do that, but I just, again, it's mostly a time thing. I mean, one of the things about this channel is is I definitely want to keep this a hobby. Um, so I don't want it to take up most of my time. I have a, a full-time job. Um, I really, you know, like being a, a missionary working, you know, in Christian ministry here is, I, I consider that more of like a calling. It's like a lifelong thing. It's not something that I would give up, you know, to, to run a watch channel. Um, and so, yeah, I, I want to be mindful of the amount of time that I spend on this and, um, basically what's kind of happened is I, I used to play a lot of uh, video games. I, I, play, I was into League of Legends was the last one I played a lot of. And since I started doing the Watch Channel, I've kind of stopped playing League of Legends. So my video game time is now I'm doing watch reviews, um, which is a much more productive hobby to have and more rewarding and fulfilling, but it's still just a hobby. So as far as like starting other uh, platforms, like if I ran a Discord channel, having to moderate that and set it up, um, yeah, I'm, I probably wouldn't do that. But maybe if I do the live streams every now and then, is you know we have time to chat like that for it. All right, watch our treasure. Twelve years old, and you got a watch channel. There's not a lot of twelve year olds that are that into watches. That's awesome. I'd love to check it out. Um, yeah, my uh, my nephew started a YouTube channel. He's uh, I think he's ten, um, but he's uh, doing mostly Legos. Uh, so it's cool to see. Yeah, it's it's cool to see kids getting into YouTube. It's it's such a like I'm 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 39, so I'm almost 40. Um, so seeing this grow up, uh, yeah, it's it's weird now seeing the the kinds of experiences that kids are having and the um, yeah yeah I grew up watching cartoons on television and now most kids are growing up watching guys on YouTube doing stuff. So uh, review of HMT watches, yeah I've yeah I've kind of been interested in getting one of those too. I'm a little nervous. Um, just I don't want to get like a Franken watch or something. Uh, but yeah, th those seem like some pretty cool values and some cool options there. Um, yeah. Thank you, Stuart. Yeah, I you know I haven't um, I haven't really gotten any of the Discord channels. Um, I think uh, so. If you if you're interested in like connecting more, so I have an Instagram account. I'm on I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm a member of the Budget Watch Collectors group on YouTube. So if you guys track that one down, that's a cool group for guys who are interested in Budget Watch Collectors. Oh, not YouTube, Facebook, sorry. It's a cool Facebook group um, if you guys are interested in joining that. Uh, the mods there are great. That's a great one for people into Budget watch Watches. Um, and then uh, AB over at Watch Collecting Strategy runs a Slack group that I'm in as well. Um, so those are some other groups that I am in that you guys can track down if you're interested in asking me questions on any of those. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm usually pretty good at trying to get back to people on Instagram, too, if you connect with me there. Uh, Swiss or Japanese movements. Um, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't experienced many Japanese movements that would be comparable to the Swiss movements. Most of the Swiss movements that I've gotten um, tend to be in a higher price uh, price range. Uh, so yeah, for me, it's mostly cost, like, um, and usually I, so for that reason, I, I, I'm fine with Japanese movements. I definitely appreciate a, a good Swiss movement. Um, it's high, cool to get a higher beat rate. You know, a lot of times a little bit more, um, regulation done on those, a little bit better accuracy, but, um, you know, bang for buck, you go with the Japanese movements, right? Uh, favorite style of watch, um, I would say aviation watches. Um, or field watches. It's tough. I, I would have definitely said aviation watches before I started getting into the hobby more, but um, recently I've really, yeah, I've really found myself drawn to field watches a lot more. Any advisable field watches? Like that's so, the ones I'm looking at, I definitely want to get one from Hamilton because I haven't checked out a Hamilton field watch. Um, and yeah, there, it's a, the, the Khaki King, I think is a cool looking one. Uh, and then I, I, there's so many khaki field watches. Um, but yeah, there's a 42 millimeter that has kind of a vintage style dial that I really like. Um, those are cool. Um, I'm also interested in checking out Vare. Uh, Vare field watches. They're a micro brand uh, based out of California. 
uh, but they have some really cleanly designed field watches that I like as well. Um, what else? Yeah, those are the ones that are probably biggest on my list. Yeah, Boulder, Bol yeah, Boulder makes some cool watches too. Definitely got their own uh, style, and it's been cool to see Boulder kind of develop their design language. They they were a little bit more scattered shot when they first started, but now they're really honing in uh, a consistent design across all of their watches that you can look at and say, yeah, that's a Boulder watch. It's a cool watch, um, and it's got its own look to it. Um, yeah, I like both Dan Henry and Brew. I don't, I haven't owned either one of them, but both of them are watches I've seen and looked at. And they're like, yeah, I definitely want to get one of those. Dan Henry, um, I think it's the 1963 Chrono. It's the Pilots inspired one that has the 12 hour bezel. Um, that's definitely one I'd be interested in checking out. I really like the looks of that. Ah, oh, three watch collection. Um, I've tried to do that a couple of times. Um, if I were going to do a three watch collection, it would have to have a G-Shock because I would need a beater watch. Um, if I do in a three watch collection out of the watches that I have, um, yeah, I would probably go with the G-Shock, the uh, Orient, and the Yema. Like if I were doing a three watch collection out of my watches that I have in line right now, I would go with these three. Um, I'd be a little bit shortchanged when it came to needing to dress up. I think either the Yema or the... Uh, uh, Orient could kind of, you know, squeeze in in a pinch and set aside for a, a dress watch. Um, yeah. Let's see. Do you think, okay, watches are treasures. Do you think dress watches are important because I don't get to go to formal events, but at the same time I feel left out when people talk about theirs? Um, if you don't have an occasion to wear a dress watch, I don't think they're that important. Um, I, I, would, I would think, you know, it would be good to have, even if it's just like a cheap fashion watch that, that is a dress watch style, something simple, something thin, um, something that you know doesn't look too huge or out of place, so that you could wear it to a formal event when the occasion comes. It's, to me, to ha like having a dress watch is kind of like owning a suit and tie. It's the kind of thing that you know, for me, mostly I have sitting on the shelf uh, a lot of times. But you know, when you need it and you have it, it's good to have it. Um, yeah. Uh, Phoebus, uh, I like them. I haven't gotten any of them. I've contacted them a couple times to see if I can get some on the channel. Um, but yeah, they're definitely one as far as like value for money goes. Um, they seem great, and I really like their designs. Uh, th their designs are a little, maybe some are a little bit, um, kind of a mashup of different things. But overall, I really like the what they're doing, the looks of them. Uh, what else? Were what did I do with my damaged G-Shock? Um, so one of the guys on the comments gave me some tips on fixing the button. So I was able to get the bu button function again. Um, the inner case is cracked pretty bad, so I'm sure that's hurt the water resistance. Uh, but because it is now functional, uh, even though highly damaged, I went ahead and ordered a metal conversion kit off AliExpress. So I'm going to slap it into a metal case and see how it works and maybe wear it around for, for a while. So that's the plans for the damaged G-Shock. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, how do you decide between different watches when buying? What factors do I consider? I mean, again, like, um, yeah, it's it's kind of shifted from being a watch collector to a watch reviewer. So a lot of my buying decisions is informed by the channel and what I want to feature on there. So that's it's kind of weird, and the, like I, I I think some guys might look on that and be like, that's kind of, you know, not not the way you should do it. It should be a very personal thing, and you're buying the watches for yourself. Um, I I really enjoy the the channel aspect of it. Like the hobby has been, it's almost fifty fifty now. Like running the YouTube channel and learning about video production and all that goes into it, um, is almost as much fun as the watch collecting part of it. Um, so it's kind of, you know, I don't, I don't really mind that the hobbies have become intertwined like that and the channel is affecting my buying decisions because I, I get a lot of enjoyment out of both of them. Um, but yeah, I, that, that is not how obviously everybody else is doing it. So I don't know if that helps much. What does my, oh, let me pass that. Uh, recommendations on where to find good priced watches, the current situation. Um, yeah, Metacardi, uh, I've, you know, I haven't bought anything there. My wife uses that for a lot. She buys a lot of stuff on Metacardi. Um, Yahoo Auctions. Um, you know, I haven't been as impressed with Yahoo Auctions as eBay. And even on eBay, there's a lot of Japanese sellers selling on eBay too. Um, but yeah, if you, I think, I think in Japan, the retail, the resale prices, people like Japanese people, 
um, take such good care of their stuff. So if you buy a watch from a Japanese seller, um, there's a good chance it's going to be in better condition than if you're buying it from an American. Um, but by the same token, they, you know, the like the thrift stores and stuff here is kind of the same way. If you go to a thrift store here in Japan, the prices are way more expensive than American thrift stores, but the, the stuff that they sell is a lot of it's in like like new condition or some of it's still in the, the original packaging. Uh, so it's just a little bit different there. You, you're not going to get quite as good a value typically from the Japanese sites, but a lot of times you'll get better products. What does my wife think of the collecting? Um, yeah, she's a lot more uh, happy with it now that I've. It's all. It's also generating its own revenue, so I don't have to spend any of the family money on this. Um, yeah, uh, she. He, most of my watches, she she doesn't like, but it's all. I do get. I do take her opinion a lot on it. Um, she kind of. It's it's like I can I can ask her what she thinks of it, and I'll know what kind of normal people are gonna think. Um, yeah, but um, overall, she's yeah, she's largely supportive of it. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, she, I think she's she's I think she's more happy about the YouTube channel doing well. She's like gets really excited about that. Um, she doesn't care about the watches as much. Um, okay, guys, this is starting to get a little bit late, so I'm gonna have to wrap this up. I'll try and buzz through the rest of these questions um, because yeah, it's Saturday night here, almost midnight, and we've got church tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, what are we next? Uh, story behind becoming a Christian missionary and minister. That's a long one. <laughs> That's a great one to ask right at the end here. Um, yeah, so uh, I was raised in a Christian home and um, always admired the work of missionaries and really had a, a heart for that. Um, my dad was a pastor, so they definitely kind of infused that into me as well. Um, but I thought I... Uh, was more into kind of the back end sort of thing. So I, I went to school, uh, got a, went to a Bible college. So my minor was Bible, but I majored in computers. And I went and graduated and started working for a missions organization in their computer department. Um, but kind of through the college experience and through the experience of working as a computer tech for a Christian missions agency, um, I went to Japan on short-term trips. And um, yeah, just really fell in love with the country here and really felt called to be more involved in, um, yeah, in, in a more active kind of frontline role. Um, there's very few churches, very few Christians. Um, I, you know, as a Christian, I strongly believe that the Bible is true and that the gospel is a message that uh, people desperately need to hear. And Japan is one of the countries in the world that has one of the smallest Christian populations. So there's just a huge percentage of people that just have never never heard it before um, and so I wanted to be a part of, of helping people ha at least have that opportunity to hear it um, yeah so that was the, the initial draw um, part of it also is my uh, my grandmother was Japanese so I'm one quarter Japanese so I I grew up not speaking any Japanese having a little mild experience of Japanese culture through here but always interested in the country so definitely had a heart for um, this country, so my grandma, she came, she was born and raised in Japan, moved to the States when she was in her 20s. Um, and then, yeah, me and my brother is also a missionary here in Japan. So two of her grandchildren kind of made the, the journey back to Japan. We're back over here. Um, yeah, over here. Uh, I am in uh, northeastern Japan, so Tohoku region. Uh yeah, so the yeah one of the cities that was hit by the tsunami were in Iwate Prefecture, which is one of the most rural prefectures. Uh, where are we at? AliExpress special. I look forward. Um, I definitely want to get a San Martin. Um, that's something I'm looking forward for. Um, there's a lot of good San Martins that I like. I haven't gotten any of those yet. Yeah. Citizen Nighthawk a couple weeks ago. That's great. End up selling the Bodori Irvin. Uh, no, I still have it. Um, I'm hanging on to that for a while because a lot of people were asking questions about the movement. And again, I'm kind of new to all this, but apparently with um, long power reserves, one of the biggest technical challenges is keeping it accurate throughout the entire length of that. So this one has a huge 72-hour power reserve. So I wanted to do some follow-up testing, and I've been doing that because um, I didn't do really strenuous accuracy testing on it. So I'm, I've been running that down to kind of try and figure out how accurate it stays. So I'll probably be doing a follow-up on that Bodori Urban. Um, yeah, just to, to talk more about the accuracy of it. 
consider making a full SKX mod video? Probably not. I haven't done any mods yet. Um, it would be a while before I got there. Um, I got an email from a um, company called DIY Watch Club or Watch uh, Review, and they sell kits where you they they sell you the movement, the case, the bezel, um, the case back, the parts, the strap, and you got to assemble it all yourself. Um, so I, eventually I might get around to doing one of those and that would be kind of my first sort of semi-mod experience. And I'll try and film that. I'm, again, just with the amount of videos I have to make right now, I'm so far behind, it's a little bit daunting to even think about filming that because I feel like filming that's going to be more of a um, work than my typical videos would be to do a mod video. Um, yeah, for mod videos, Loom Shot on YouTube, he's just amazing. Um, he's one of the best uh, modders that I've seen and then also just one of the best video videographers I've seen his video production and editing and everything is, is top-notch so I love loom shot there uh, really want you to hear speak Japanese a little bit what I, yeah I th that's always it's always hard to switch in the middle of that I have no idea what I would say um, let me try and introduce my channel あ、皆さんこんばんは。え、私はえ、ロビさんデビットです。え、YouTubeで、え、何かウデイドけ、お、デビューをさせていますえ、最近え、2万人の何かサブスクライバーになりました。今はそのようなビデオを作っています。お